Hey guys, let's talk about Tammy Lynn Leppert. Tammy was born on February 5th, 1965, and she's been missing since July 6th, 1983 from Rockledge, Florida. At the time of her disappearance, she was 18 years old, between 5 feet 4 and 5 feet 5, and between 105 and 115 pounds. She's a Caucasian female with blonde hair and hazel eyes. She may spell her first name T-A-M-M-I. She occasionally uses Tammy with an I and or Tammy Lynn as stage names. Tammy may have been three months pregnant at the time of her disappearance, but this has not been confirmed. She was apparently suffering from emotional problems at the time of her disappearance. Tammy left her family's home in Rockledge, Florida at 11 a.m. on July 6, 1983 with a 20-year-old male friend. She said she was going to the beach and would be back in a little while. She never returned home. Her friend later told author authorities that he and Tammy had an argument while driving and that he left her standing in a parking lot outside the glass bank near an Exxon gasoline station in the vicinity of State Road A1A between 2nd Street North and 3rd Street North in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Many reports erroneously state that Tammy was barefoot at the time of her disappearance. Her mother said she noticed she had not combed her hair before leaving the house that day, which is very unusual of her. She usually spent considerable time on her appearance before going anywhere. At the time of her disappearance, Tammy was planning to go to California to act in some movies. She apparently never arrived there, however. Investigators looked into the possibility that Tammy was attacked by Christopher Wilder, a man linked to at least a dozen disappearances, RAPES, murders, and or attacks of women in the early to mid-1980s. He frequented the Florida region at the time of Tammy's disappearance. He sometimes attempted to lure young female victims by offering non-existent modeling sessions and or other tactics, which would have fit well into a scenario involving Tammy. She was a relatively known model who had won several titles and was an occasional, occasional actress, landing bit parts in the film Scarface and Spring Break, and she wanted to be an internationally famous star. Wilder, whose history of violence towards women went back to his adolescent years, was put on probation in 1980 after pleading guilty to an attempted sexual battery towards a teenage girl. While on a visit home to Australia that same year, he was charged with kidnapping and essaying two teenage girls. His parents bailed him out of jail, and he flew back to the United States, promising to return for his trial, which was set for April 1984. Wilder is also a suspect in the Florida disappearances of Mary Opitz, Rosario Gonzalez, and Elizabeth Kenyon. He was killed during a shootout with authorities in 1984. Tammy's family filed a $1 million lawsuit against Wilder before his death, but dropped the suit afterwards. Tammy's mother, modeling agent Linda Curtis, later stated that she never believed Wilder was involved in Tammy's disappearance. Police have never been able to link Wilder and Leopard, and it may be a coincidence that she disappeared at the same time he was targeting area models. He had a long history of sex crimes, but did not begin his killing spree until a year after Tammy vanished. John Brennan Crutchley, the so-called vampire rapist, is also considered a possible suspect in Tammy's case and in the 1985 disappearance of Patty Lou Valensky from Mims, Florida. He was sentenced to life in prison in 1986 for kidnapping an RAPING, a woman in Orlando, Florida. He drained half her blood and drank it. Crushley died by taking his own life in prison in 2002. Authorities have never been able to link him to Tammy or Valansky's disappearances. Curtis criticized the police for allegedly mishandling the investigation into Tammy's disappearance. Police initially believed she ran away and some continue to think that foul play was not involved in her case. Curtis said her daughter was afraid of the man who last saw her, and that the individual was never properly investigated. Authorities say they did the best they could to find Tammy and the man she was last seen with and has been interviewed and is not a viable suspect in her case. On June 1st, a month before Tammy vanished, she began acting erratically at her home. She yelled and screamed, broke a window with a baseball bat, and accused family and friends of trying to poison her. Curtis took Tammy to a mental health center for a 72-hour observation after she calmed down. Psychiatrists there could not find anything wrong with her, and a toxicology screen of her blood and urine turned up no indication of drug use. Tammy's mother planned to find a therapist for Tammy, but she disappeared before that could be arranged. 
Her mother believed that Tammy may have been kidnapped and murdered as a result of her knowledge of a large-scale drug and money laundering operation in Brevard, Florida. The operation allegedly involved many prominent local citizens. Tammy was reportedly afraid for her life because of what she knew. She, she stayed in her bedroom more than usual and refused to drink from open containers or eat from her own plate. Her mother claimed Tammy made a police report about what she knew, but investigators have no record of the report and do not espouse her mother's theory. Her mother moved to Orlando, Florida after her daughter's disappearance. She passed away in 1995. Tammy's sister is still looking for her and believes her mother's theory about Tammy's disappearance. Tammy's dental records have been lost. Some agencies incorrectly state that her home is in Cocoa Beach, Florida. If you have any information, please call the Cocoa Beach Police Department at 407-868-3269 or 321-868-3251.